And welcome back to The Factor on Sense. And you remember long ago with us old folk where you would never tell anyone what your salary was or about your finances. Well, you know, young people are doing the most and they are now freely talking about it among themselves. But there's a method to their madness. You may think this could hurt them in the end, but it may actually help them. Take a look. There are a number of factors that have influenced this, including a number of legal precedents that have expanded the understanding, particularly of the Na National Labor Relations Act and the ability of employees to speak freely about salaries, if not on company time, and so long as it's not confidential. So we've seen legal permissions in these settlements where sex discrimination was discovered when employees violated those existing confidentiality clauses and discovered, wait a second, male employees are making more than female employees or workers of color are earning less. And so we saw some of this historic discrimination open the legal doors of permissibility, but we also know that Gen Z and millennials share much of their information already on public. So mm -hmm. that's another factor. We've got the social media aspect where people are much more comfortable sharing when they're out of town, right? Let the burglars know we're, we're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> and, and so they're just okay with a lot of things, right? Showing more skin at the beach getting tattoos, um, a, lo a lot less conventional behaviors. And so the outliers, people getting married after 25, people having children not being married, those things are becoming the norm. So all of those factors coupled with some of the pandemic realities where we saw a number of studies coming out realizing that millennials control less than 10% of the nation's wealth, even though they comprise the largest percentage of, of the generations working those sorts of the statistics really wake people up and say, hey, I'm not going to stand for this anymore. We see companies laying us off so that mutuality of loyalty doesn't exist anymore. We see pension plan, plan, plans being underfunded, executives uh, still being compensated at exceptionally high rates, even as they lay off employees, shareholders getting returns, even as uh, cited supply chain issues uh, are, are excused, to, you know, excuses to lay off employees and raise prices. Again, the age of access even is something mm -hmm. of the mentality where uh, younger workers are saying, you know, we're able to leave the job. We don't have home uh, payments as much, and we need to figure out how to be more competitive and upend the historical wealth and employment ownership and control of companies. That's no, been Dr. Von B, let me ask you this. Has it been helpful for those young people by sharing their salaries with each other to determine how much uh, say my coworker makes, and have we been there the same time? Is it an experience thing? Is it a race thing? Is it a gender thing? It's been exceptionally helpful for employees to the chagrin of employers. So that power dynamic is being shifted. We see the number of workers who are willing to quit and, and also uh, the number of workers who are willing to stay out of a job where they don't feel appreciated. The search for meaning in your employment beyond simple payment uh, for services or, or goods delivered. So all of those sociological factors are demonstrated in the quantifiable economic realm and business realm of employees saying, wow, wait a second, you, you make how much? We've been here the same time. We have the same education. We have the similar experience. Why are you making this much more? Or why am I making this much less is probably the more realistic question. Exactly. Right. So, and so it's been helpful. Is this a strategy that older workers should take up as well? I mean, young people are sometimes on the cutting edge and they may have something here. One of the challenges is even with EEOC protection, older workers still have a lot of the psychological uh, concerns about being employable. So there is a concern when we look at statistics on lifetime of employment and just longevity generally, that older workers uh, are afraid, probably rightfully so, that employers will favor younger workers just because of the time that they potentially have to offer that company. So older workers are not necessarily going to be as comfortable with it. And they're certainly going to have certain fears about employability if they do get laid off for challenging their compensation. But it benefits any individual employee to have education and data. And so we've seen a, a, a great amount of data being available through Indeed or Glassdoor sites. We've seen a lot of public information. State salaries are public. So now social media coupled with the access to data and technology, instead of having to get a faxed request of uh, all the employee salaries or trying to call someone on the phone to find out what they're being paid, you can just do a Google search for many, many employees to figure out what 
an appreciable range for uh, a doctor, a lawyer, a mechanical engineer, any of those salaries is going to be publicly available to, in a range, even by geography. All right. Dr. Dietrich von Biedenfeld from the University of Houston downtown. Um, it's a sign of the times and young people are doing what they need to do in order to be happy on the job. So we're not going to we'll see take- if- <laughs> Let's see if the old folk will do something. Nah, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> Thank you, sir. 